While scavenging the refuse of the floating city of Zalem, Dr. Dyson Ito discovers the body of a young cybernetic girl who happens to have a functioning human brain. Dyson manages to assemble a new body for the girl and dubs her Alita and... Yeah, it's cold, alright? Okay, I needed to keep warm. Anyway, as Alita begins to adjust to her new life in Iron City and trying to reclaim her memory, she forms a relationship with a young Repscallion named Hugo. Alita also begins demonstrating knowledge of the fighting art of Panzerkunst, long thought lost during the Great War between Earth and the United Republic of Mars. Because of this, the higher-ups of Zalem are none too pleased to learn of Alita's existence, and it now seems to have put everyone that Alita cares for in grave danger. Also, there's a dog that gets gruesomely killed along the way. This is Battle Angel Alita... well, Alita Battle Angel. <laughs> based on the manga ba Battle Angel Alita. So yes, now you understand why that gets confusing. Um, so... Uh, there's a lot to like about this movie, but there's also kind of a lot not to like about this movie, unfortunately. Um, overall, I enjoyed a lot of the performances. Uh, Salazar, um, Rosa Salazar, I think, uh, who plays Alita, is very good. Uh, Christoph Waltz is naturally very good. Um, uh, the sort of secondary big bad of the picture uh, is Masahara Ali's uh, Vector, who's uh, kind of second uh, second to the big guy who runs all of whose name is Nova, who's actually played by a cameoing Edward Norton uh, very, very briefly. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer Con Connelly is good. Um, so, yeah, there's some really good performances. I, I know some people are bagging on the guy who plays Hugo a lot, but... Uh, I, I found I, th I thought he and uh, Alita had some good chemistry going on. They have a decent story going through there, um, but there's some other bits of this. Um, this thing seems to want to end about three or four or five different times, and it just keeps tacking twenty minutes onto itself, and that's a it's a real grind after a while. I mean. We have Alita being built and discovering the world that she lives in and meeting Hugo and liking Hugo, but also causing a rift between Hugo and his friends, who it turns out are black marketers who um, basically they go after people with cybernetic enhancements and steal said cybernetic enhancements so that they can sell them to uh, Vector, who is the proprietor of a death sport called uh, Motorball. I almost called it Murder Ball, but it's not called Murder Ball because you're not supposed to kill people, you're just supposed to get the ball in the goal. Um, and Motor Ball is basically like the big sport that everyone seems to like in this. And that, exactly, it's like, that's a movie unto itself. Also, um, Dr. Ito is going out at night and he's coming home, sometimes damaged, and it turns out that he's called a Hunter Killer, which is sort of a bounty hunter type, and that's a movie unto itself. And then Alita wants to uh, starts showing off some natural fighting urges, and it upsets him. And that's a movie unto uh, that's Ito, and that fight, it's a movie unto itself. In fact, at one point Alita becomes a hunter killer. She also becomes a motorball athlete. And yeah, oh, okay, uh, see, there's a little too much going on in this movie, and I think that's the problem when you're trying to condense a multiple volume uh, manga into one solid movie. It doesn't always work. In fact. A lot of people uh, came to Battle Angel Alita because it was one of the first anime, uh, the manga got adapted into an anime, but even the guy who created the manga, and the, the anime is not very good because it he wasn't completely done with the story yet, and he would rather have that happen before yeah, doing any sort of uh, animated adaptations. So you kind of get the idea that the same problem seems to happen here. In fact, they without giving too, too terribly much away, because I know people complain when I talk too much about the movie, but um, this thing does kind of end with some sequel baiting, and it's like, judging by the fact that this movie is like three times delayed, because this thing was supposed to come out, I believe, at one point in 2017, and then it got delayed till summer of 2018, and then it got delayed till winter of 2018, and now it airs out in February of 2019. So yeah, like, that doesn't help. This thing has been sat on for 20 years, and so it's like you might need to hedge your bets and just try to tell a nice, condensed, solid story 
and leave maybe the door open for sequels, but not sequel bait for a, an expected sequel. And right now the box office projections, while it's better than what they were thinking, still don't look, uh, don't appear to be very good. It doesn't look like China is going to necessarily bail them out. But yeah, you know, and like I said, there's some decent, but like I said, the performances are good in this. The story is decent, but like I said, it just ponders and ponders and ponders, and like I said, it just feels like it keeps tacking ten minutes onto itself. I mean, we have um, Jennifer Connelly's character, Shireen, who is the ex-wife of Ito, and it turns out Ito and Shireen's daughter was named Alita, and she was either born paralyzed or something happened where she became paralyzed, and Ito built the body, uh, the, the initial body, the one that looks kind of... Uh, sort of plasticky that you see in the early parts of the trailers for uh, their daughter Alita but then their daughter got killed by someone trying to steal drugs <sighs> again yes again see if it's just like every subplot is a movie unto itself sometimes and because of the like I said and so that and Shireen is working for Vector. You see again, I'm just jumping into plot points and plot points and plot points. But so yeah, there's too much going on, and then there's too much parts of not enough is going on. <laughs> where it's like, you know, you could be moving the plot forward a little bit here. Um, the second body, I will say, that, uh, the second body you see, the one that's kind of shiny and more CGI-like in this is uh, called Berserker Armor because, again, it turns out Alita was basically the robotic foot soldier for the United Republic of Mars in their war against Earth. Uh, wars, uh, Urm, Republics of Mars. Yeah, United Republics of Mars. It's basically one, and of the floating cities that were, uh, uh, that were involved, only Zalem is left over. And then there's Iron City below, which is where everything lives. And Hugo's arc is he's trying to buy his way into Zalem because it turns out he is also working, he and Shireen are working for Vector, trying to earn their way back into Zalem. Uh, Hugo's a part of the people who hack up the, like I think I said that, I don't remember, but yeah, when he explains it to Alita, he's, he says, uh, he basically sells himself as like a chop shop. But he doesn't, yeah, it doesn't get revealed until later that he's actually attacking people when he's not, and that upsets her. And, like I said, there are other hunter killers, and there's a bar fight because she's trying to unite them against this other guy. And see, again, I'm, I know I'm falling too much into, fall into the traps of this movie. Like I said, overall, good performances, decent enough story, but the pacing is just really wonky, and again, it seems like every time we hit a natural end point, the film just kind of keeps wanting to go on. And then when we finally reach the end, they start sequel baiting. And I don't think there's going to be a sequel to this, at least not from the initial viewing, even though it is pretty enjoyable. And I do see this kind of becoming a, a cult hit, like uh, to an extent Valerian was, and Fifth Element was, and Scott Pilgrim was. Where that's where I think that's where it's going to find its audience. It's going to uh, on streaming services and home. Well, no one really does home video anymore, but you get the idea. So, I think overall I'm going to give uh, Alita Battle Angel a C+. I can't quite go as high to give it a B, but it's not a terrible film. You, there are, there's a lot to enjoy, but like I said, there's a lot not to like about it. Tonight, when Doc Sloan goes after a serial killer, will he become the next victim? A two-hour diagnosis murder movie. X marks the murder. Tonight at 9, 8 central. Last Sunday, the critics were right. Sue Thomas FBI is an enormous hit. If you missed it, tomorrow night is your chance to see the show everyone is talking about. And Sunday, this heartwarming drama heats up with an all-new episode. Sue Thomas FBI, the premiere tomorrow night, and an all-new episode Sunday on PAX. Okay, trailer time, and uh, we kind of have a lot to go through here. Um, starting things off, we had two Captain Marvel trailers. Uh, there was one that was part of the uh, the whole front and center advertising thing, and then uh, there was a formal trailer after that. Um, then we had a Shazam trailer that also had a making of feature involved there. Uh, we then had Pet Cemetery again, Men in Black International, uh, our first new trailer. Um, 
that actually look, I actually think that looks pretty good. Um, I don't know if anyone else is agreeing with me on that or not, but I thought it looked enjoyable. It definitely looked better than most of the Men in Black sequels have. Uh, after that we have The Hustle, which is the uh, the female version of Dirty Rotten Scoundrel starring Anne Hathaway and um, Rebel Wilson. Um, it looked mildly decent enough. I don't know if it's something I want to drop out and go see, but you never know. Um, after that we have Us again, Godzilla King of Monsters again, uh, then one more new trailer, Tolkien, the biopic of the acclaimed fantasy author C.S. Lewis. Ah, I killed that joke, sorry. Obviously it's about J.R.R. Tolkien. And uh, last but not least we have Dark Phoenix. So yeah, um, next movie review is going to be How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. That is what it's called, right? Yeah, Hidden World. Um, after that is going to be, um, after that I'll have the random trade review on the surrogates up. Um, obviously the next video after this one is going to be the recap and review for Elimination Chamber. See you all then. Hey guys, check out my Patreon and see how you can request a movie for me to review, even if it's some stinker like A Dog's Way Home or the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Also, if you like what you see, give the video a like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell.